Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for one minute and 30 seconds. This time closely mimics the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as the treatment. Good luck. Three, two, one. I hope you looked at this rhythm really closely because if you just kind of skim through it super quick, you're going to miss something really important. Let's take a close look at it. Right away, even the untrained eye can say that this is a fast rhythm. In fact, we know for sure that this is going 160 BPM as it was described in the scenario. Now, if I'm looking at this rhythm, you may be thinking it's SVT. Uh, it is not. So if we examine it very closely, you're going to see something that SVT lacks. Let's start with some of the similarities. Now, much like SVT, the QRS complexes are fairly narrow. Also like SVT, the R to R interval is very consistent. There's no irregularity to this pattern. Unlike SVT, however, there are P waves present. It's very easy to overlook these if you rush through this card. So based on the fact that I'm seeing P waves, the R to R interval is consistent, the speed is well over 100, my diagnosis for this is going to be sinus tachycardia. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. So we're called to a local nursing home for an 84 year old female with altered mental status and hypotension. Not too unusual a call for a nursing home. The patient is, has been experiencing frequent episodes of vomiting and diarrhea. The patient who is normally alert at baseline is confused and unable to answer your questions. Physical assessment reveals pale, dry, cool skin with poor turgor, dry mucous membranes, and cool extremities. Vital signs for this patient are as follows. Blood pressure 72 over 30, pulse 160, respirations 24, blood sugar 108, temperature 97, and SpO2 of 91% on room air. The patient has no history of CHF. Now, if you've never watched one of my videos or never performed any sort of static cardiology exercise before, this isn't just about recognizing the rhythm. It's about providing the appropriate treatment. The way that we decide which treatment algorithm to follow is we need to first determine if the patient is stable or unstable. For my unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And this of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, altered mental status, and dyspnea. Based on the patient's current presenting vital signs as well as condition, this patient meets more than one criteria for CHAD or criteria for instability. Because of this, my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be an unstable sinus tachycardia. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the treatment. 
as with any other card in Static Cardiology. Treatment here is going to begin by reciting the mantra, Scene Safe, BSI, IV, O2, Monitor. Now, although I diagnose this patient as being unstable, this is a sinus tachycardia, so I do not treat this electrically. And I say this because sinus tachycardia is compensatory. If I decide I want to cardiovert this, what I'll do is I'll obliterate this patient's compensatory mechanism. It's clear that this patient is in hypovolemic shock due to fluid loss from vomiting and diarrhea. So my mainstay of treatment is going to be IV fluid resuscitation. So I will hang IV fluids and give up to 30 cc's or 30 mLs per kilogram. I know that my patient doesn't have CHF, so I'm not as worried about fluid overload as someone with a history of CHF, but because of her advanced age, I would be very careful to reassess lung sounds after each liter or after each large bolus. If this fails, we'll move on to vasopressors, starting with norepinephrine, which can be hung at 0.1 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, then dopamine, 2 to 20 mics per key per minute, vasopressin, which is hung at 0.02 to 0.04 units per minute, and then finally phenylephrine, 0.5 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Generally speaking, you're not going to get past norepinephrine and dopamine as your pressors, and if you're needing to hang a third presser, this patient generally won't survive their hospital stay. Finally, the icing on the cake, I'm going to say a 12 lead ECG, and of course, rapid transport. That's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can make your own custom playlists using my cards that you can study with for your National Registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.